Turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Paul the Apostle. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 1. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, it is grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church." touching the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ." And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him, in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, Not as though I'd already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Reading again, verse 12, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Title of the message, Almost Perfect. Almost Perfect. This seems to be the without question, the goal that Paul the Apostle was reaching for, that he was stretching for, that he was pressing for. Paul the Apostle understood, without question by revelation, that there was an ultimate And this is what he was striving for. This was what he himself said he was looking forward to. His cry of his heart was, he wanted to receive from God his best. Paul did not want to settle for anything less than God's best. And so, with that, God revealed to Paul what had to take place for him to receive his best. And Paul learned from God that that there had to be a complete death to the self-life. Not a partial death, 
but a complete, full death to the self-life. And so Paul says in verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, listen, being made conformable unto his death. Conformable unto his death. Now you know and I know that Jesus 100% died on that cross. That doesn't mean that the Son of God died. They're trying to teach folks today that that God died on the cross. No, you can't kill God. God doesn't die. The Son of God never died. The Word did not die. Christ did not die. But the man, the body that was prepared, because the Scripture tells us the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The body that was prepared for the Christ, for the Son of God, that body died because the Son of God left that body on the cross. When the Son of God left that body, life went out of that body, and the body laid laid limp on the cross. It was the body that was placed in the tomb, not the Son of God, not the Christ, not the Word of God. The Christ, when he left that body on the cross, the scripture says there was the temple and the the veil in the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. The Son of God, the Christ of God, went and rent that veil in the temple signifying the way into the holiest of all had been made through his sacrifice. And so after he left that place, after he rent the veil, he went down into the regions of the damned, into hell, not to suffer as some are teaching today. He didn't go down there to suffer as a worm and and be born again. This crazy thinking, this crazy lies from the pit of hell, doctrines of devils. No, he went down into the regions of the damned victorious. He went down there as the king of the universe. He went down there totally, completely in victory. And he took the keys of death and hell, the grave, out of the hands of the devil. That's what the Bible tells us. And then he, pre- then he went into the bosom of Abraham. He didn't preach the gospel to those that were in hell. He went to the bosom of Abraham where those that had died in faith were being kept. And he preached to them the gospel. Once they understood the gospel, he led them uh, f- free from from that place and took them with him to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is what happened after Jesus, or after the Son of God, left the cross, after he left the body on the cross. Why did I share that with you? Because the last words Jesus said when he was on the cross were, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He gave up the ghost. The scripture tells us, and this is Jesus' own words, Jesus says, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, he says, look up, straighten up. For your redemption, your complete state of release draws near. This is what Jesus experienced on the cross a complete state of release. He left that body and he put on the new heavenly house that Paul the Apostle speaks about, being clothed upon with that immortality. That's why we see Jesus after the resurrection, we see Jesus 
coming to his disciples with a body. His body had become glorified. What happened is that the Christ of God, after he left the regions of the Dan, or after he left preaching the gospel to those that were in the bosom of Abraham, he was on his way to go to the throne to bring, to go and sit with the Father on the throne to consummate the wedding between us, between God's people and God, to make make us one through his blood, that on his way to, to consummate that, that marriage, he stopped to talk to Mary. Because the scripture says Mary was weeping at the tomb. And Jesus stopped to talk to her, to comfort her. He was on his way to the throne. And so Mary ran up to Jesus And Jesus said, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to the Father. So he was on his way to the throne to consummate the new covenant, the marriage of God and his people. And so after he had this this intimate relation or this intimate experience with Mary or this intimate connection with Mary, Then Jesus, Christ, the Son of God, uh, went to the Father. Now, obviously, before he went to the Father, he must have went back to the tomb to get his body. He must have went back and got his body. And that's why the Scripture says that he... Uh, or that the tomb, the stone was rolled away and there was no body in the tomb because the the Lord must have went back, got his body and then he was standing there as the gardener. They thought he was the gardener. Mary thought he was the gardener. And he was getting ready to go to the Father. But I believe before Jesus took his body back up, I believe the Lord went down without his body, into the regions of the damned and into the bosom of Abraham, a place called paradise, without his body. He went down there as a spirit. But then, when he was on his way back to go to the throne to consummate, he uh, stopped by and picked up his body. At that point, his body was resurrected and glorified and this is what Paul is talking about that I may know him in the power of his resurrection hallelujah this is the ultimate this is where mortality puts on immortality that same power that Jesus that the Christ of God took back his body took up his body is the same power that God has promised to those that love him that we, after this outward man perishes, not going into the grave or not being put six feet under, no, mortality being swallowed up in life. That's what the scripture teaches. This mortality being swallowed up in life being clothed upon, not with the earnest, not with just partial down payment, but being clothed upon and swallowed up in the power of God. Hallelujah. Being swallowed up in God. Now we see that the Laodiceans are going to be spit out. They're going to be spewed out. We have a choice. We can either be swallowed up in God or we can be spewed out. What determines whether we're going to be swallowed up or spewed out is going to be, are we cold, are we lukewarm, or are we hot? What's the condition of our spiritual, uh, our spiritual life with God? Are we on fire for the Lord? 
Are we lukewarm? Are we cold? Where are we? And I believe all those that are on fire for the Lord are going to be swallowed up. And they're going to, their mortality is going to be swallowed up in life. You talk about changed. This is what Paul was reaching for. This is what Paul understood that as he's swallowed up in life, as he's being swallowed up, he realizes that death is swallowed up. He realizes that in this process that he's got to die. As the Spirit of God, as the glory of God swallows up this old man, as, as he swallows up this, this natural, this mortality, there's a death that takes place. But it's not a long process death. It's a quick death. There's a quickening. I'm looking forward to it. Paul was looking forward to it, reaching for it, stretching for it. And I believe in this process as we're stretching forth to, for the ultimate to be perfected is that we forget those things which are behind. It seems like that's one of the greatest tools the enemy uses, try to get us to think about our past. No, Paul said, forget it. You can't change it. You can't do anything about it. All you can do is forget it and press on. Look forward to those things which are before you. Folks, this is the ultimate resurrection from the dead. Paul was not talking about being put into a grave. He was talking about being swallowed up in the power of God's resurrection. The power of the resurrection. This idea that you have to be put six feet under or that you... I mean, I'm listening to them talking about the snowstorm in Buffalo, New York and talking and putting it on the screen six feet under, under snow. Well, the world's already six feet under and the carnality and flesh. They're already dead, full of men, dead men's bones. We don't have to be put six feet under to be resurrected. The idea that you have to die in the physical, and be put in a grave to be resurrected is from the pit of hell. That's a lie. You don't have to go into the grave to to be resurrected. So we're reaching for, we're stretching for, for that which we have been apprehended of the Lord, praise God, to attain to the resurrection of the dead that we might be perfected. In fact, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, three days and I'll be perfected. After three days, I'll be perfected. So even Jesus likened the resurrection to perfection. Amen. Hallelujah. He is able to make us perfect. Perfect, folks. Without fault, without flaw, without any uh, fracture, without any blemish, without any spot, without any wrinkle. And if he is able to do it, then let us let him do it. Why don't we let him do it? Remember this, you can't attain to it if you don't believe it. Remember that. If you don't believe it, you're certainly not going to attain to it. You're certainly not going to strive and stretch and reach for something you don't believe can take place. You got to believe it first. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tis the season. And if you're tired of giving the same old gifts year after year, why not head on over to naturalcoasters.com? Check out the huge selection of handcrafted stone coasters, a unique gift that's sure to put a smile on anyone's face. You can even personalize your coasters from naturalcoasters.com with your logo, photos, or artwork. Natural coasters are made from real, super absorbent stone in the USA. So head on over to naturalcoasters.com and find that special gift. That's naturalcoasters.com. Or call us at 336-757-2274. That's 336-757-2274. 
Tis the season. And if you're tired of giving the same old gifts year after year, why not head on over to naturalcoasters.com? Check out the huge selection of handcrafted stone coasters, a unique gift that's sure to put a smile on anyone's face. You can even personalize your coasters from naturalcoasters.com with your logo, photos, or artwork. Natural coasters are made from real, super absorbent stone in the USA. So head on over to naturalcoasters.com and find that special gift. That's naturalcoasters.com. Or call us at 336-757-2274. That's 336-757-2274.